Hello, it's Greg with the Open Steam Controller Project, and I wanted to make a quick video of building the custom firmware for the Open Steam Controller. Now, I've heard back from a couple people who have had issues with this, so hopefully this quick walkthrough will give you uh, an idea of how to do this, or show you where maybe there's some missteps. Um, I'm on Mac OS. Hopefully that's representative of other operating systems as well, but if you see something here that is completely different than what you're seeing or what you're experiencing, please let me know, and if I can make another video, we're straightening that out. All right, so let's get started. First thing, you're going to want to clone the OpenSteam controller uh, repository, which I've done that here. You can see I've looked inside firmware OpenSteam controller. We just have our source and our include, so we've built nothing yet. So next thing you want to do is launch LPC Expresso. If you're on Mac OS, it's going to be under Applications. And there is a little shortcut here called Open LPC Expresso. So let's double click on that. And it's going to ask you for specify workspace. I'm going to specify this temporary workspace uh, so that everything is fresh and clean in the same way that if, you know, for someone who's starting new on this project. All right, so the ID is up. I don't care about the welcome screen. And now we want to import essentially the project. So go to File Import, go down to General, Existing Projects, Next, and then we want to specify where everything is. So if we go to the temporary directory where I checked everything out, Steam Controller, Firmware, um, that's about as deep as you need to go. It'll be able to find the projects from here. I would unclick faux controllers because it's kind of a work in progress. Uh, it's not something you need, essentially. Uh, and the main things you do need is the LPC library and then the actual Open Steam Controller project, which is really the custom work done for this project. All right, click Import. We've got two projects here. So first thing you want to do is go to build the LPC library. Shouldn't take long. It says it finished. And look, we have no problems. Perfect. Now we want to build the Open Steam Controller project. Running building. Again, no problems. One warning, but that's just a kind of debug function I've left in there. Um, so do not worry about that warning. And that should be about it. So we've built everything. Now we go back here. We have a debug folder. If we look inside debug, we can see there is a new bin file in there. It is 124, 125 um, now, but we have just built or created that. So hopefully that'll give you an idea of how to do all this. And if you want to stick around, I'll do a quick run through of the firmware for maybe people who are getting started or, if, you know, kind of don't know where to start some It'll give you an idea of maybe what you can do. Um, so, start off with our main function, or our main class, because this is where our entry point is. Uh, so there's an initialization function here. This is really just setting up PLLs and power supplies and stuff like that inside the chip. Um, a lot of this is just making library calls, so there's nothing too exciting or custom to the hardware going on here. Um, next thing that happens is a read from EEPROM. So the way the Steam controller works and the official firmware works is it reads some data out of EEPROM to check what hardware version it is. Um, and we make sure that that happens, otherwise we kind of just sit here and wait for the controller to power down. Uh, that's what Valve's firmware does. Um, I'm not entirely sure what the difference in the hardware is. I'm not even sure if other versions got released, but I kind of just left that check in there to be um, consistent. Then there's another, and I'm just calling stage two init, which essentially does more initialization. It brings up all your peripherals and everything like that. Um, once that's done, you have to configure the USB. Um, and then we go into one of two main loops. So this firmware can go out one of two ways, and the way you choose those two ways, if you go to include, there is firmware config.h and there are essentially two different ways you can build this firmware. Now that's what you set this firmware behavior to. Uh, when you check it out it'll be set to dev board firmware. That's the firmware where the USB acts as a virtualized UART. So 
you can sit there and you have a terminal interface essentially and you can interrogate different hardware peripherals. Um, this is really good for development or debug or a really good utility for reverse engineering. Now, the other way is if you set firmware behavior to switch wired power A firmware, that will build up a firmware that makes the controller act as a wired switch controller. Um, so those are kind of your two different firmwares you can build up. Um, and then we'll go back to main, and you can see in the ID that right now they're configured for the dev board, so it's going to go through this main loop. So you can see it just enters the main loop, goes, and just again and again it runs this handle console input, so it's essentially checking for uh, new characters received from USB or from the serial interface essentially, the virtualized serial interface, and then it waits for an interrupt or essentially waits for something to happen, checks for more characters, and then handles them. And then for the switch wired controller, what it does is it checks the status of um, kind of all your GPIOs and your inputs, or whether, and then sends off a new USB packet up to the switch and then waits for an interrupt. Um, so kind of a good place to start if you were just kind of wanting to see the controller do something different um, would be to kind of mess with these main loops, maybe put something in here to change the state of the LED. So right now when you start up the controller, the LED will be on. However, if we look at ledcontrol.h, there's a function here that lets you set the LED intensity. So if you were to include and add that function into your main loop, you could essentially see the LED turn on and off when different things happen. So if you want to turn it on and off every iteration through the loop, that might show you something, you know. It it might not show, you know, you might want to add some sleeps in there and maybe change the intensity to see it ramp up and down. Um, in the case of the switch firmware, this loop should run about every 10 milliseconds. I believe that's how often it checks in to get new USB packets. Um, for the dev controller, it should run essentially every time that you are um, inputting a new character, unless you've enabled another interrupt. So I'm not actually going to claim that that's exactly the way it works, but hey, that could be a fun experiment to see what it does. Anyways, maybe uh, give people you know a good idea of kind of how to get started playing around with this. Um, hope it helps. Thanks for watching. Bye.